High in the anti-Atlas mountains of southern Morocco, daily life has long revolved around the struggle to find water. These mountains sit on the edge of the Sahara Desert, where rainfall is rare. Droughts last for months, and groundwater is increasingly salty and unsafe to drink. Over half the locals live without running water. Every morning, women and children walk several kilometers across rocky terrain to collect only a few jugs from the nearest valley. The journey consumes hours that could otherwise be spent on education, work, or rest. In this region, water scarcity shapes every aspect of survival. Yet each morning, the mountains reveal a hidden resource. Fog from the Atlantic Ocean drifts inland, blanketing the slopes in thick white mist. It settles briefly on the rocks before the rising sun causes it to evaporate. For generations, this moisture was ignored, a source of water that disappeared untouched. But when a team of engineers from Germany visited the region, they noticed something unusual. Moss grew on rocks even though rain was nearly non-existent. This suggested high humidity levels, and the possibility that the fog itself carried enough moisture to be harvested. The Water Foundation, working with industrial designer Peter Troutvine, began studying the area in detail. They analyzed wind patterns, humidity, and the recurring fog cycles that swept across the mountains. Their goal was straightforward, determine whether the fog could be turned into clean, drinkable water. After confirming the potential, they partnered with local communities to seek a practical solution. What emerged was a system named Cloudfisher, an innovative fog harvesting technology designed to transform mist into water using nothing more than mesh, wind, and gravity. Before the system could be built, the team spent 18 months testing different materials. They studied how each mesh performed during heavy wind, varying fog densities, and extreme temperature fluctuations. The most effective design was a double-layered 3D polyethylene mesh, with millions of tiny gaps where droplets could collide, accumulate, and merge. This mesh was resilient, UV-resistant, and strong enough to withstand the harsh mountain environment. It could capture high volumes of moisture, while remaining stable under powerful Atlantic gusts. Construction began on steep, rocky terrain. Local workers, familiar with the unforgiving climate, joined the engineers to prepare the foundations. They dug large pits to anchor steel support posts, structures that would hold the fog-catching frames upright throughout the year. The steel components were transported up narrow mountain paths and lifted into position. Workers tightened bolts, secured joints, and fastened the frames into solid rock to prevent movement during storms. Once the frames were set, the 3D mesh panels were stretched across them. Workers climbing ladders and wearing safety harnesses carefully aligned and tensioned each panel, ensuring the mesh remained flat and optimally positioned to intercept incoming fog. Beneath the mesh, technicians installed V-shaped gutters designed to capture condensed droplets. Each gutter was attached with precision, so water would flow smoothly into sealed pipes without loss. Those pipes connected to central storage tanks are placed downhill, using gravity to carry the water naturally without pumps or electricity. When fog rolls through the mountains, tiny droplets collide with the mesh fibers. They form beads, merge into larger drops, and slide down into the gutters. From there, the water is directed into the sealed pipe network and delivered to storage tanks. A group of 10 Cloudfisher units can collect 600 to 1,000 litres of water per day, even during the driest months when temperatures climb above 40 degrees Celsius. This consistent supply has transformed life for families who once relied on long, exhausting journeys for a minimal amount of water. 
clean water is now available for drinking, cooking, washing, and even small-scale agriculture. Instead of spending hours collecting water, children can attend school, and families can manage daily activities with greater ease. The system requires no electricity, no heavy machinery, and almost no ongoing maintenance. Its simplicity is its strength, making it ideal for remote areas where traditional water infrastructure is impractical or too costly. To maintain long-term sustainability, the project adopted a consumption-based payment system similar to a water bill. Households pay modest fees, usually between $1.2 and $1.5 per cubic meter, to support operational costs and prevent waste. For many families, this system works well, but for the poorest households, the cost remains a barrier, forcing them to continue collecting contaminated water from distant valleys. Despite this challenge, the overall impact has been significant. Between 2016 and 2018, the project expanded into the world's largest fog harvesting installation. 31 cloud fisher units were erected across the mountains, covering over a thousand square meters of mesh. These units are connected by 26 kilometers of pipelines and supported by five large storage tanks capable of holding nearly 1,000 cubic meters of water. Today, the system provides clean water to 15 villages, a school, and over 7,000 livestock. Collectively, the network produces over 36,000 liters of water per day, a supply that continues year after year with minimal human intervention. Fog, once ignored, has become a lifeline. This transformation in Morocco reflects a broader global effort to adapt to harsh environments using innovative engineering. Another remarkable example lies thousands of kilometers away in northern China, where an entirely different challenge threatened communities and ecosystems. For decades, desertification posed a growing danger across vast regions. Sandstorms originating from the Gobi and Taklamakan deserts regularly swept into major cities, including Beijing. In some years, residents endured more than 80 days of hazardous airborne dust. Environmental degradation from overgrazing, deforestation and excessive groundwater extraction accelerated the spread of deserts, eroding soil, and undermining agriculture. In response, China launched one of the most ambitious ecological restoration projects in human history, the Three North Shelter Belt Program, commonly known as the Green Great Wall. Unlike traditional walls built from stone or concrete, this one aimed to use forests and vegetation as a living barrier. The project extends more than 4,500 kilometers across northern China and aims to plant 35 million hectares of new forest by 2050. Its purpose is to stabilize soil, reduce sandstorms, protect farmland, and restore valuable ecosystems. The strategy began with careful terrain analysis. Engineers used satellite imagery and drones to study dune movement, wind patterns, and the behavior of shifting sands. By understanding how the desert expanded, they could design structures to slow or reverse that process. The primary solution relied on straw, arranged in massive checkerboard grids laid directly across the sand. Each grid square, roughly six meters across, acted as a barrier that reduced wind speed and prevented sand from drifting freely. Workers transported enormous quantities of straw into the desert, often through areas with no roads and extreme temperatures exceeding 49 degrees Celsius. They arranged the straw bundles in precise patterns, digging shallow trenches and anchoring each piece firmly into the sand. The resulting grid stretched across vast expanses, forming a geometric lattice that stabilized the dunes and created protected zones where moisture could collect. Once the sand was stabilized, planting could begin. Mechanical augers drilled holes at the center of each grid cell, and drought-resistant plants such as saxol, desert poplar, and red willow were planted by hand. These species were chosen for their ability to survive with minimal water and tolerate extreme conditions. Workers placed each seedling carefully, added water, 
and compacted the soil to secure the roots. The straw grid protected the young plants from harsh sunlight and reduced evaporation, giving them a chance to grow in an otherwise hostile environment. Over the years, the straw decomposed naturally, enriching the soil and helping the plants develop deep root systems. As the vegetation expanded, it created increasingly stable landscapes. The growing forests formed natural windbreaks that reduced the strength of sandstorms and anchored the dunes in place. Areas once dominated by shifting sand gradually became green belts, supporting wildlife and protecting nearby communities. Together, Morocco's fog harvesting technology and China's monumental desert restoration demonstrate how engineering and ecological design can reshape the world's driest regions. One project captures water from the air, the other plants live directly into barren sand. Both prove that with creativity and determination, even the harshest environments can be transformed. These initiatives also offer valuable lessons for regions facing water scarcity and land degradation. They show that solutions do not always require advanced machinery or vast amounts of energy. Instead, they can rely on natural forces, intelligent design, and sustained cooperation between communities and engineers. As climate change intensifies, such approaches will become increasingly vital. The story of these projects is a reminder that innovation often begins in the most unlikely places. Fog drifting across a mountain ridge becomes a source of clean water. Straw grids laid across dunes become the foundation for forests. In both cases, simple ideas evolve into transformative systems that restore stability, improve livelihoods, and reshape entire landscapes. Humanity's ability to adapt continues to grow, and with it, the potential to reclaim deserts, protect vulnerable communities, and use natural resources more wisely. The fog nets of Morocco and the living wall of northern China stand as powerful examples of what is possible when engineering meets necessity and perseverance meets imagination.